Everybody I appreciate have a good that. Night. You take care. Bye, Tony. All right, you guys. We'll I'm ready for it. Here we go. It's coming your way. Here we go. Supreme Overlord Justice Angel, how you doing? I'm doing okay. All right. Uh, I think we all have some clarifying questions, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who who wanted to go first? Uh, obviously me. Obviously then, crikey. I thought you were going to lead it off. Okay. Uh, we specifically just want to talk about the criminal use of a firearm. Okay. Uh, it, it is a misdemeanor. We we understand that. Um, due to the ruling today, um, are you saying that we need to see the person discharge or use the firearm? I'm just saying there needs to be something besides the GSR alone. So like a witness or some statement to the effect or visually seeing it. Like there needs to be some other supporting piece of evidence to back it up. So therefore, someone needs to see the person use the firearm. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Or, I mean, frankly, I, if you can find some other supporting piece of evidence that demonstrates it, like maybe there's casings laying around his body where he was, mm -hmm. or maybe you could um, pull up a, well, I mean, camera footage would be way too easy as an example. We should have stayed um, that because that, that was literally like, yeah, so we brought up two points. Uh, mm -hmm. One was the fact that uh, he was surrounded by bullets on casings on scene and DNA. And the other one was that he doesn't have a legal firearm mm -hmm. uh, license. And to me, those are supporting evidence of use of a firearm. Maybe. criminal use. Uh, I, I would agree, but I actually don't recall um, in any of my questioning or line of questioning that I saw uh, anything about casings being around him? I uh, was, yeah, so that it doesn't count if it's, because uh, uh, several officers said where he was and there are photos of where he was. And uh, I, I'm on, I'm sure that you know that uh, the biggest thing that we do, first of all, is try to preserve life. It doesn't matter whose life it mm -hmm. is. And we move Very the individuals as, as quickly as we can. So sometimes it's mm -hmm. uh, a bit rude for us to take a photo. You, you don't need to take a photo. I mean, officer, what testimony is enough, you know? I'll give you an example. Okay. In this specific case, um, the way I could see a path forward to a guilty is, uh, see, who was it again? It was, uh, was it Dahmer Dahmer that saw him first? Uh, it was uh, this Frost on their side okay. and Loki. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so neither. Okay, so Frost, you saw him, Loki, you you, you two saw him first. So yeah. let's say you roll up to him and you see him, they see a bunch of casings laying on the ground. Um, you see people yeah. robbing him. Um, in this particular instance, I think the best way forward with you would have just been to acknowledge that he was surrounded by casings. He had GSR. Um, and then you could try and potentially either build a narrative of who he was shooting at so you could show the casings from where he was to where they go with the projectiles. Um, or you could just say that, you know, he has a bunch of casings around him. He has GSR positive. And, you know, we heard gunshots in the area. And when we got Excuse there, he me. was laying on the grounds. And we saw people, you know, grabbing stuff from him. This is Ruby. Hey, Ruby, this is the okay, court case winner. Uh, I'm just at the uh, uh, 50, ready to pick 50%, up. 50%, 50%. I'm just here ready to pick up my ammunition. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll be there shortly, uh, just as uh, Angel was just talking to us about a couple of things. Sure, sure. Uh, sure I can yeah, see if there's another... The no, no, she's actually telling us what an amazing job we did, yeah. Really? Really? Yeah, yeah. She, she's, she's, yeah, she's definitely uh, telling us how good we are. <laughs> well, let me know when you're free to get that out. Okay. All right, I'll give you a call, okay, once I'm uh, back at MRPD. Okay. Because I know it means so much to you. Oh, it means so much to me. So much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. K. Thank you. Okay. Near him and a GSR positive. We also saw individuals that, you know, were going through his possessions that could have potentially taken things away. Didn't we? And we have projectiles this nearby side? indicating that he very likely could have. Hello, been Ghost Co. Things. Thank you so much. So stuff like that it doesn't need to be. Um, a lot Closing's the best. To, yeah, yeah best like it, it can just be enough to bring attention to it. Mm -hmm. I can't even sense. remember the perjury. Mm -hmm. I also sense. think that um, this is probably asking for too much, but um, I think it might be helpful in the pictures of like um, casings and stuff if you can kind of like highlight um, whose or whose. 
I don't think I would do this for every case because it's just way too much work and it's not necessary. But if you guys ever find yourself in a specific case where there's lots of um, like confusing pictures about casings and stuff on the ground, it can be helpful to like highlight what is what because the evidence v uh, VR thing doesn't really work at the moment. So I the don't think there's any cases you need to do that for, but I'm just saying like if there ever mm -hmm. arose a case where it was confusing, that might be helpful too. It's just so hard when uh, they all got robbed and so we don't have a firearm uh, to match the casings at their feet. We can only go by proximity. And that could, that could still be an argument though. Uh, essentially okay. all we're asking for is anything it, it really doesn't need to be much anything besides just the gsr test so just just the photo and like highlighting I evidence so, i have a question so there being like mm -hmm. a massive like shootout that like pretty much like all the officers like saw and then we arrive on scenes getting robbed and uh is gsr positive no weapon did an officer see him with a gun no but doesn't the gsr says that he shot anyways he doesn't even have uh, a license. GSR of test, or yeah, yes, the GSR right. test basically conclusively can say that a weapon was fired, but it on its own is not enough to essentially convict someone of a crime. Isn't it a crime for him to sh discharge a firearm without a weapons license? Yes, it is. But so now then... she's saying that someone has to visually see him do that. No, I'm saying there needs to be some more supporting evidence besides just a GSR test. I'm so confused. I thought we brought up. Is it for the future so we can maybe point it out more in evidence? I, just, I just on the... Sorry, you go. No, you go ahead. Um, just on the evidence highlighting comment, uh, mm -hmm. a while back a judge was like, we can't... We shouldn't do that because that's quote unquote tampering of evidence, but you're happy for us to kind of highlight things on photos or? Uh, who said that? I, I can't remember the judge. Um, I don't um, see that as tampering. If you wanted to, to post the original and then a modified one, that'd be fine. But there's not many cases both. I think where you would need to do that. So, so I understand that like as a, on the face of it, the logic may seem a bit off because from your perspective that they fired a gun. They have a GSR oh. test. They may not have a gun, so it's inherently obvious that they had a gun, they fired it, and now it's gone, right? Um, I totally understand that logic, and I get it. All we're asking for is just some minor uh, additional evidence that is not just the GSR test. Okay. It's really, yeah. we're really not asking for much. You don't need to necessarily see them with the gun. You don't necessarily well, we need to watch them the gun people down. Out. Okay, mm -hmm. but no one ever witnessed that they saw him shooting people. I, I suppose my head is just trying to formulate this into a way that I can explain it to other officers. Mm. That I'm I'm not bothered, you know, whether it was a you know a win or lose. That's that's not. I'm just now trying to think how do I explain this to other officers, uh, so mm. that they can correctly correctly articulate that charge, because because that right. charge for absolutely months upon months we have given to someone that is GSR positive on the scene of a shooting, whether they have a gun on them or not. Okay. Um, and I think also that a lot for probably 90% for... of those cases, it'll still apply. Yeah, we also use it for a lot of hot gun charges too, so. Well, that's different because when we're talking from a hot gun, um, say for example, that someone discharges their firearm and you find that gun later having, you know, put that casing in into evidence some way. That's a charge for the gun that carries to the person. There's a different evidentiary burden there because Hawken charges inherently have a little bit less proof that needed to actually convict someone of them. Um. So, you know, you can conclusively say that this gun fired. There's That's hard proof. That's It's even harder than a GSR test because right. you have a full ballistics uh, running of it. So you can say conclusively... This weapon was fired. We have this is no report, you know, that could mitigate whether this was criminally used or not, um, whether it was a civilian or, or not. Most most cases, more often than not, it's a hundred percent going to be criminal use because the, the proof is just is that high. Does that make sense? Ballistics are are more conclusive than a GSR test. Okay, I guess, I, I... I guess the simplest way I can explain this is a GSR test is effectively one piece of the puzzle. 
that you need. And for criminal use of a firearm, it's like 95% of the piece. Or 95% of the puzzle. Okay. I, I think we've got, uh, between all of us, we can put our heads together and, and word this correctly. I, I think okay. we're cool. Yeah, as right, I said, so I wasn't... Much, Justin, yeah, Angel. yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of things. Like, cat calls could help you out too. You, you all figure it out, okay? I believe in you. All right. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, you. Justice Angel. Anyone else mm -hmm. got questions? Thank you, you guys are good? No. I'm all good. Uh, okay. Um, I guess there's one thing. What, what so thing? In, in a situation like this, no, no, not the recalling. I was wrong about that. I was not thinking with my brain. Um, in a situation like this, when we we witness like there was at one point three different groups of individuals, there's BBMC, CG, and ADMC, mm. all shooting at each mm. other. We might not see every single person that's shooting, but we saw multiple people from all the groups, and then we see somebody getting robbed, and we GSR test them and they're positive mm -hmm. and they're where most likely their firearm was being kept. There's just nothing there anymore. When the, the people who are robbing them are running away mm -hmm. plus the GSR positive plus, I mean, we have a bunch of pictures and there's other people from chain gang that were arrested and ADMC on the scene. I, is that, is that not enough like supporting evidence? Like, I get if we just rolled up and there was, like, not a big shootout and we just saw somebody on the ground and we had, like, one... Ruby just like wants to know how to explain this to other officers. And we rolled up She's and not really bothered, the not you know, enough, so but, much about the outcome. Like, the Apart that she'll probably get shot. Mm -hmm. Does that not meet the evidentiary burden? Okay, they're big words. I mean, it very well could. I, I love the... I love the back and forth with them. It's so much fun. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you that you definitely had some of that stuff, but uh, I uh, I don't frankly believe that we had enough to conclusively say that he was criminally using a firearm. The only witness statements that I have from you guys on the stand is saying that, you know, there was a shootout. You guys showed up. There's a bunch of people shooting at each other. He was laying on the ground. Some people robbed him. You GSR tested him. I like Croc. He, I'd like to see all these him other try. mitigating factors. Um, you know, I'm not going to just inherently conclude yeah. someone is guilty of criminal. It is definitely on the record that he puts fire, firecrackers in his bum. <laughs> all right, I, I think we can put our heads oh. together and, and discuss this uh, and and work it out. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm, um, I'm cool. Listen, cool? I will say this. You know what you said there. I uh, very well could be a compelling argument that should be presented in a court case should this ever happen again. So, uh, uh, yeah, on the other side of things, it has been very difficult. Uh, as I'm, I talked to Judge Adams about to get a lawyer who is willing to go against certain um, <clears throat> people in our city. It is very difficult right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we I, did the I best imagine. we could. Listen, it's not your fault that, uh, you know, you can't catch everyone, okay? No one's going to fault you for that. It's literally impossible to do. Yeah. So don't don't even put that that on your shoulders, frankly, because it's it's quite literally impossible to stop all these, these people out there doing their thing, you know? Just do mm -hmm. the best that you can. Yeah. I will say that uh, getting lawyers is going to be super difficult just because a lot of these guys are kind of... Um, I don't know what the word is to say. <sighs> a lot of them are kind of scared of uh, working with the mm -hmm. PD, from my understanding, because, you know, these guys are out there on the streets, right? And, you know, just like how I mentioned earlier, you can't stop all the crime. You guys can't really protect these guys either. And they see these guys on the street way more than they see you guys. Yeah. And frankly, there's nothing you can do to really protect them from them. So if you're a lawyer that's choosing to represent the PD, you are essentially... Uh, you might as well be a member of the PD yourself. And, yeah, that, uh, that can be di that can be difficult for some people to stomach. That is the suggestion I wanted to bring up to Judge Adams. I just haven't had a chance to talk to him um, mm. about possibly having special prosecutors that work in the PD uh, that are bar certified and specialize in helping the PD with their cases. Because I asked two lawyers and they both said, hell no, we're not going against Mr. K. I think that's fine. So, I think uh, we should definitely do that. I think we already have one, no? You have, you have Cornwood, right? 
Uh, yeah. Is that a bar license? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah. What was the Esquire, yeah. Cornwood Esquire? Yeah, like yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I mean, if you guys really want to do that, I'm sure Adams would have absolutely no issue with uh, giving bar certificates or bar uh, licenses to those who really wanted to do that. And hey, I frankly yeah. would like that. So, 